isn't science, folklore, littered with stories of the people who ignored their intuition and investigated the weird result and that led to the breakthroughs. So would, would training the other 85% <laughs> maybe bring an end to those moments of great discovery? Yeah, I, I don't know. So there's a, there's a real worry about using one or two isolated cases to make generalizations about the use of intuition in science. So That would be unscientific. It would be unscientific, right? Uh, it would also be unphilosophical of me. So, but let me, let me just talk about, uh, about a couple. So there are some... Uh, quantum mechanics is a really obvious case to talk about because um, there are some people who would who maybe say that the reason that quantum mechanics took so long to be accepted was that people thought it was just not very intuitive. And so, yeah, intuitions there might, might hold us back, they might prevent us from, from seeing what's going on. On the other hand, there are various um, discussions from Einstein where he wants to seemingly talks about the way that his intuition has guided him and helped him and enabled him to see things. Now, I don't want to say that that's Einstein using his intuitions as evidence at all, right? I want to say it's just really messy and really difficult to see what's going on with the use of intuitions in science. And that's why we need to get much clearer and adopt a very scientific and thorough approach to finding out what's going on there. One thing that Ladyman and Ross say, which I think is absolutely right, um, is that there are times when what scientists do is they use their intuitions to see in advance of careful testing uh, how a particular theory or model will apply to a problem space. And that's because of their great experience in, in doing science. Uh, and that seems right to me. That, that seems absolutely right. And then the thought is, it's the experimentalists who come in, who do the checking and the careful work to see whether or not those theories are right. I mean, that would even seem right to a scientist as well. I, I would think so, um, although I'm not sure. Um, I, I don't have any data, right? I mean, I, I it would seem right to me that it would seem right to a scientist, but uh, their, their seemings are not my seemings, so, so we'd have to check. What, what interests me, though, is the claim that Ladyman and Ross make, which is actually that that's the only use that the theoretician makes of their intuition. So it's, it's in advance of careful checking to see how something will apply to a problem space. Is that the only use that they make? I, I just don't know. Um, even in that idea, so you're right that the idealised science includes that use. What I'm interested in, I guess, is then whether or not the idealised science should also allow us to make other use of intuitions. At, at the experimental phase. At the experimental phase or at the theoretical phase. You've gone over into the lion's den and spoken to scientists about this. I know you gave a talk to physicists yeah. about it. How does, how does some of the things you're saying here go down when you talk to scientists about it? So some of my best friends are scientists. Um, I think that, that when I gave the talk uh, to, to the guys over in, over in physics, there was uh, quite a bit of scepticism about the claims that intuitions are, being, are having an evidential role. Okay, so that was something I touched upon a little bit in the talk. And what people were saying in response was, look, when it comes down to it, it's all about the data. That, that's the be-all and end-all in the end of, of what goes on in science. Now, I'm happy enough that they're right. right? Ignore the thing about dropping data points based on things. Right? Put that to one side. Let's just, let's just talk about what happens in the other 85% of the cases. I think that they're right that in the end, what it will come down to, the, the, the evidence, the data will trump everything else. But I'm not just worried about trumping concerns. Right? So it's perfectly consistent with what, what folks there said to me, that in the end, you've just got to go with the data. The intuitions are nonetheless playing an evidential role. Right? So it is still a, a reason to believe a theory that it's intuitive, or a reason to think that some observation's right that it's intuitive. Uh, it's just that what we're most interested in is the data and is the observation that we make. Right? So, so it might be that the, 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 the evidential weight that we give to the intuitions of scientists is tiny, right? the, the big work's done by the observations. But even if there is a tiny bit of evidential use of, of, of intuitions in science, that's going to factor in at some, in some places, particularly where you have data that seems to be neutral between two theories or at a point where you're undecided about which way to pursue a particular theory or what to do next. If you've got an intuition that some particular thing is right and it, that intuition is doing some evidential work, you're likely to go one way rather than the other. 
But then if the, the, the scientists will say, but when I go that way, if the data doesn't back it up, it's still a dead end. And I've got to be man or woman enough to turn around and go back to the start. Absolutely. And, and again, right, so I'm, I'm not suggesting that um, the intuitions um, playing an evidential role trumps the data. Um, what the, the kind of scenario you've described there or responded with is one where we go, yeah, the intuition was some evidence, so we went that way, we found the data didn't match it, so we had to come back and go that way again. But notice that in that process, that, that process of scientific deliberation, the intuitions were still doing some evidential work. They were enough to send us that way, and then we had to come back and go, okay, that wasn't right, now we have to go the other way instead. I don't think that's evidential. That's just, it was just... Uh it was just a feeling. I mean, it was the toss of a coin, and you were, and you allowed your feelings to toss the coin. Well, I don't think it would count as evidence, would it? So I'm honestly not sure without really filling in the details of the cases. So what, what you would really need to test this is to actually go and work in someone's lab with them, interview them on a regular basis, and, and actually interrogate the, the decision-making process a little bit more. It, it seems to you as if that that's, a, that's a case where intuition isn't playing an evidential role. My, my seemings are more neutral around here. I'm, I'm not quite sure that that's going to be right. I mean, here's another way to say it back that, that maybe will make my reasons for saying that a bit clearer. We've got two theories. We think that they're competing. Um, and I say, well, look, this theory is the one that seems right to me. So I'm going to pursue this one. Now, the way that I've just described that from the internal side of things, that wasn't a case where someone said, well, flip a coin, going to go that way. It was, but this just seems right. And because it seems right, I think this is worth my investigating. It was given a non-random waiting. It was given a non-random waiting, yeah. And that seems to be giving it some credence. You're not talking about evidence that will be in the footnotes of a paper. Absolutely this, not. This is yeah. just evidence that helped you decide which experiment to do on a Wednesday afternoon. Maybe so, yeah. yeah. Well, does anyone disagree about that then? Is it? Well, so it would look like Lady Moon and Ross would disagree when they say that there's only a very narrow use for intuitions in science. And when I, when I gave, over, gave this talk over in, in the sciences, people seem to be disagreeing with me that intuitions are playing any kind of evidential role at all. Right? There's just nothing there to be done. Seems to me that might be wrong, um, and apologies for all the bag seeming gags in here. Um, but, but that's why we need to actually go away and investigate and really find out what's going on in there, I think. It feels to me that when you talk about using intuition as evidence, you're almost using it as evidence with a little e, as opposed to evidence with a capital E, which is what makes it into your paper in the science journal. Yeah, so, so the idea that evidence, that the intuitions are playing a very small evidential role versus the data, and that you would never cite your intuitions uh, as evidence for a theory in a paper. That strikes me as right. Okay? That, I'm, I'm totally on side with that and I, I don't think that practicing scientists typically go around, if, or if, indeed if ever, writing their papers for, for nature and say, well I intuited that this theory was right, so it's right. right? That, that's, that's way too crude a picture. Um, but what I do think is that in those little steps along the way where you're thinking, right, what do I do next? How does this work? Which theory looks like it's going to be right. Well, that one seems like it's going to be right. I think that that's some small evidence for that view, so I'm going to pursue that view. Um, that, that still seems to be a case where someone's using their intuition as a reason or as some reason to believe that a theory is true. That seems to be evidential to me in, in some small way, again, very small way, um, uh, but it does seem to be giving intuition some evidential role. I mean, we've talked a little bit about the, the intuitions of the trained practitioner, right? So that physicist who's been in the lab for many years, they've got a really clean sense of what works and what doesn't, what's right and what isn't, uh, and they are able to tell whether or not to drop an observation and, and so on and so forth. Um, but we also accept that there are other um, intuitions that we might have that we're required to, to, to give up on by science. So um, one, really, one thing that's, that's kind of intuitive is the idea that, that causation uh, is, like, is, is like a banging thing, right? So one billiard ball strikes the other billiard ball, the other billiard ball moves off. Causations are banging between those two things. And when you get down to um, fundamental descriptions of reality, you don't find any of those bangings going on, right? You don't find any touching, as we've seen in your recent videos. Um, so there are some intuitions that physics requires us to give up. Fine. 
all fine and good. Now, what the natural thing to say is then that the reason that physics succeeds is that the intuitions that the physicists are using are those intuitions that they've developed from doing the physics and not these other ones. I don't know how we separate those two things out cognitively. Okay, so I'm, I'm an individual, I have various intuitions. I'm honestly not sure I could tell my philosophical intuitions from my everyday intuitions. Um, that, that kind of introspective granularity, to use some really pompous language, isn't available to me. I, I just can't tell them apart that cleanly. So I'm a practicing physicist, I'm in the lab, I'm, I'm, I'm doing my experiments, I'm, I'm, I'm using my intuitions. I don't think it's just quite so clear that all of the intuitions that they're using are those intuitions honed in response to the physics, as opposed to those everyday kind of humdrum intuitions that might lead us uh, into error when we're doing science. Now, again, that's not to say that, that physics is a terrible discipline and everyone's doing that. It's coming back to this point that I just don't think it's clear how we're using our intuitions and that we maybe need to do a bit more of investigative work. Intuition's a funny word like that in a science context because it's one of the few things where if you say that scientist is really intuitive, that's a compliment. Yes. But if you tell a scientist the way he thinks and does things is really counterintuitive, that's also a compliment. Yeah. So particularly a counterintuitive result, right? That's, that's, a, fan, that's a result. That's what you want to see, uh, as long as you have the intuition that the observations are right, I guess. Um, but that, that's, that's really what you want to be seeing, something that's surprising that you didn't expect. But an intuitive result is also considered... An intuitive is also good because it helps confirm the theory or better the theory out. Philosopher, but, but paid up member of the Science Appreciation Society, right? So nothing I say here is intended to cast any aspersions on, on practicing scientists or science as a whole. Uh, I think science is a hugely, I think it because it's true, science is a hugely uh, successful discipline that, that I think uh, works really, really well. So what I'm interested in doing is finding out how the science works, not saying here's a problem with the way that practicing scientists are working.